Diabetic neuropathy is not a new topic to our show or to our website, but our solution with the photon stimulator is ignored by most of the medical profession. So tell us about this new research that was a multinational uh, finding with uh, Germany and the UK and many other countries that were involved in this study and what their solution is and what they're leaning toward in treating the pain part of diabetic neuropathy. Right, that's a really good point. All this research has been going on for about 30 years and you have to give credit to people who want to do research like that. But when we have a solution to the problem now, it just fries me to, re to even think that we have the solution we're wasting our time doing studies like this. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with the pharmaceutical industry because they want to sell their, their drugs. There's no question. I mean, when we talk about infrared light therapy, and I invite you all to put that into the search box, just put infrared light therapy in the search box, and up will come a myriad of articles to talk about what it is, how it works, and why it should be used, and the application for diabetic neuropathy. In this particular study, they were studying a chemical called methylglyoxal, uh, which is something that stimulates nerves uh, to be more sensitive. And in the case of diabetic neuropathy, it's probably related to causing the pain. But my, my position would be is, so what? You know, I don't really care about that when we've already solved the problem. Now, the FDA hasn't approved infrared light therapy, and that's another long story, basically because if they did approve it, it would cost the pharmaceutical industry 30, 40, 50 billion dollars a year in revenues from all the pain medicines that are used to treat people who have diabetic neuropathy that's painful. Well, one of the things that's interesting to me, though, is to note that many of the doctors are not even open to it. No, well it sounds radical, you know, you say you shine a light on somebody's foot and it makes the pain go away and they go, right. But in actuality, we have treated hundreds and hundreds of people who have diabetic peripheral neuropathy that's painful or not painful. Well, what are some of the things that this light does to help the diabetic neuropathy? Really good question. There are lots of things. You're looking at increasing circulation, first of all, and it works the same way as nitroglycerin does in the heart. When, it, when you take nitroglycerin, it causes a release of nitric oxide, and when nitric oxide hits a blood vessel that's in spasm, it pops it open almost instantly. So when you shine this light anywhere in the body where there's vasoconstriction, and in diabetic peripheral neuropathy, there's a lot of peripheral vasoconstriction because the arteries are stimulated by the sympathetic nervous system excessively and you wind up with no blood flow. And that's what causes the pain, actually. Well, one of the other things that I think is so exciting is that people that do have pain associated with their diabetic neuropathy, which I believe is about a quarter of the people that have it, Mm -hmm. um, it's excruciating pain, and the, the, the light just like erases this pain. Yeah, and it, it happens quickly. Let me tell you some other things it does, too, besides increasing vasodilation, increasing circulation. It reduces inflammation. Studies from NASA show it speeds up healing in the range of 50% for all kinds of, of injuries uh, or, or chronic uh, causes for pain. Uh, it relieves the, this, the nervous stimulation of the C fibers that cause the horrible burning pain that people get. Uh, it, it actually puts energy, ATP, which is the energy currency of the cell, much like gasoline is to a car, ATP is to a cell. And when you make more energy and then you've got cells that are not being nourished properly because of the constricted arteries that are going to the nerve of the feet, it gives them a chance to catch their breath and resuscitate them so that they can do things that are, are more normal. And there are other actions as well that, again, I'll, I'll, I'll invite you to go to the infrared light therapy information on the site. But you're right, Vicki. You see, most people don't really appreciate how many things this light does that are complex, interesting chemistry, biochemistry and physiology. One of the things that, I, that I've seen you do with these people is many of them, their feet are numb uh -huh. and they can't feel the bottoms of their feet and it's like they're walking on cardboard or something. They feel like it, yeah. And so when you give them a treatment, they can feel their feet. I remember one time you treated somebody and he says, oh, ouch, I just stepped on something. And his wife said, you could feel <laughs> it, you <laughs> could feel it. She was so excited. Yeah. He didn't even realize, right. you know, that 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 was 
an exciting thing at the yeah. moment because he stepped on a pebble or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it also, you know, that's how you injure your feet and you how you wind up with infections and ulcers and amputations. About 15% of people with diabetic neuropathy wind up with amputations. And this can prevent a lot of those from happening. So when we're talking about biochemical changes that are of the sort that are published by this particular group, even if it's a multinational group and for 30 years, when there's a solution that's red hot that's out there, we should be taking a look at that. And just to give you some kind of idea that there is some substance to this, it's beyond my uh, exclaiming that there is. So we have a, a National Institutes of Health grant for $6 million today at the University of California in San Francisco, where we're studying people who have peripheral neuropathies that are painful that are caused by chemotherapy. So this is not some figment of my imagination and a few other people. This is not medicine for the fourth gener uh, fourth millennium. This is medicine that's here today. And you know, having uh, diabetic neuropathy or chemotherapy-induced neuropathy... Or any other kind. It really. really affects people's quality of life. It's hard for them to sleep. It it affects their moods, their self esteem, their independence. Yeah, they can't get it's around. It's really a tough thing to have, and there's more people that have this than you would be aware of. Right. The sad part about this is our FDA is not being responsible about making these devices that have been created uh, approved for the treatment of diabetic neuropathy. I hope at the conclusion of our study, if it comes out positive at the University of California, San Francisco, that that will put added pressure on them to bring this to the attention of particularly the medical profession so doctors can realize that we're moving from an era of biochemistry to an era of quantum physics and light that are going to change the way medicine is practiced. So. Hang in there, and uh, if you know somebody that, that you know, if you that has diabetic peripheral neuropathy, even if it's not FDA approved, you can still try it. The results are incredible. <laughs>